Hello my Sock Universe, for a review of a Serie A round that was very much conditioned by the huge clash in the Derby d'Italia between Inter and Juve and this was an all-time classic, a 4-4 draw. In this fixture, this is unheard of. Both teams playing forward and yes, there were some defensive errors along the way, but both teams really going also for the win. In the end, it probably feels more like a loss for Inter, that 4-4 draw. However, there was also another big story because of floodings and a lot of rain. The Bologna against Milan game was already postponed very early on, posing quite a few questions along the way. I mean, Milan really tried to get this game played and suggested many alternate locations or even played behind closed doors. That was never gonna be accepted by Bologna. There was a huge impetus for Milan to actually have this played because Deo Hernandez is still suspended and also Tijani Reinders and there's a huge clash against Napoli coming up. So I do understand why they want to have played on the other side having gone through such a situation here in Austria. I think if there's flooding you shouldn't actually play games. The big problem though is the calendar because I mean both of those teams have a full calendar until February so this game will have to wait a long time to be played and you know this might be one of those that will probably play towards the end of the season. We have to wait and see for that one. So not good news for Milan overall. However, you know, you get a few extra days to prepare for Napoli, who now have a little bit more comfortable lead atop the table thanks to that 4-4 draw without really convincing. And so, yeah, this clash at the San Siro in the midweek will actually be quite interesting. I'm not sure if I will do a midweek Serie A review video, but we have to see about it. But there were many other things happening as well. I'll talk about all of this in my quick summary of the match day, where we start, of course, on top of the table. In an absolutely mad Derby d'Italia, Inter and Juve play out a 4-4 draw that mostly helps Napoli, who got a meager 1-0 win over Lecce thanks to Di Lorenzo goal. At least they created chances this time around. And everyone predicted a draw between those two giants of Italian football, but no one expected 8 goals in that one. It was an absolutely mad game, up and down action, perfect advert for Serie A. Although Serie A prides itself with defensive solidity, there was nothing like that there. Zielinski with a penalty gave into the lead however a really nicely played attack to a deep ball to mechanics and played over to Vlavic 20th minute it's 1-1 Timothy Weah a little bit later on taps in a Concesao cross and suddenly Juve lead in Milan however the lead did not even last for 10 minutes because of really brilliant direct play by Inter where the ball comes to Turam over to Mkhitaryan who then takes a very nicely placed shot to equalize and just two minutes later it's another penalty another stupid foul Zielinski steps up again and this time also gets past Di Gregorio so it's 3 to Inter at the half and after the half Denzel Dumfries after missing once actually scores a goal makes it 4 to Inter and then it was really more that Inter were closer to the 5-2 than Juve to the 4-3. There were so many chances and Di Gregorio made two really great saves in there as well and Kenan Yildiz comes on after McKennie assist he makes it 4-3 in the 71st minute and suddenly the stadium was really, really, really nervy. And not long thereafter, it was actually in the 82nd minute, Kaden Gildis equalizes to make it 4-4. Absolutely mad game. Both teams playing kind of for the win, although Inter definitely look more like the losing side here. You had earned a big confidence boosting draw. Well, let's look at the Serie A round outside of the three table toppers. We had actually two Friday games. I guess there's a midweek round, but also Serie A is respecting kind of the Ballon d'Or, which is happening on Monday evening at the time I'm shooting this, actually. So let's look at the Friday games. Udinese got a relatively easy 2-0 win over Cagliari. However, it was definitely helped by a yellow red card through Mukombo. In the 30th minute, 38th, Luca scores the opener and then Davis seals the deal in the 78th minute. Meanwhile, after a horrid losing streak, Torino are back to winning ways, winning 1-0 over Como. The winning goal came through Jay. unfortunate after a big mistake by young Austrian Braunöder. But overall, Torino were good for that win in a kind of stale match overall. On Saturday evening, Atalanta ran wild over Hellas Verona. After 50 minutes, it was already 3-0 with Verona retake and Teketelare scoring. Lukman adds a brace just before the half. Saar actually managed to pull one back before 
before Retegi gets his second goal of the evening. Retegi has now scored in nine games in a row. Pretty amazing stuff. For a good while, it looked like Empoli will get a win out of the Ennio Tardini, leading through a Koulibaly own goal in the 35th minute. However, Parma brought on Charpentier at the halftime and got a little bit more oomph that, that way. He actually gets in the 80th minute the equalizer and then he's fouled just a couple of minutes later. It's a penalty. Bonnie steps up and puts it over the bar. There was also good news for Austrian Serie A players with Svoboda scoring a goal for Venezia in a 2-2 draw at Monza. However, he was also implicated in the equalizer through Djuric to make it 2-2. Elatsen and Kiria Pokopoulos scoring the first two goals with Venezia always going into the lead. The second half then kind of fizzled out. It was a really exciting first half. Bondo is even sent off in the 80th minute with a second yellow card. Lazio, one of the more underrated teams this year in Serie A, get another win. It this time it's a 3-0 over Genoa. That result was never really in doubt. It was just a question how high will it be. Noslin, coming from Verona, actually gave Lazio a lead in the first half, but it took them a while until they added on to that. In the 86th minute, Pedro scores the second one. Vecina in stoppage time adds a third. And Fiorentina also have flipped the switch, winning 5-1 over Roma after beating Lecce away from home 6-0. They're on a really good run, sitting now in fourth place. They're the first chaser. And and the goals came early on. Moise Ken in the ninth minute and Beltran with a penalty in the 17th minute. Fully deserved. Roma is an absolute mess. Juric actually tried to instigate some change by taking off Cristante and Angelino after half an hour. And yes, they get a goal back through Kone. Moise Ken, though, very quickly re-establishes two-goal lead. And then it gets in worse when Roma youth player Bove scores after an early assist in the 52nd minute. Hermoso is then sent off with two yellow cards within five minutes. And laid on Hummels on his Roma debut for Dybala. That's a weird one. Scores an own goal. And Fiorentina win by a very emphatic 5-1 scoreline. As I said in the opener, with the draw between Inter and Juve, Napoli now are four points clear of Inter. However, if you look at the first column after the points, Inter are still heavy favorites to win the title. The four-point cushion is not enough. And to be honest, Napoli is really not playing all that convincing as well. It is kind of tight overall. I mean, Fiorentina, Atalanta, Lazio and Udine now are ahead of Milan. However, Milan actually have the game in Bologna in hand. Whether you can book this as a win or not is the question. If Milan should get the win, and that's the way probably we should look at it in a way, they would draw level on points with Juve. But it's really, really, really tight from Inter to Torino. It's really packed together. Roma, we already said it, their season is more or less over in the sense they will not be pushing for a Champions League spot. Maybe if they could get a run together, but at the moment this is a really, really huge maybe. There might be a chance, maybe they will finish in Europe, but I actually think there's a big chance for one of the smaller teams to snatch up a Conference League spot potentially. On the bottom, it's also quite murky yet, I would say. I mean, I don't want to say Bologna is really in there, but you know, this is kind of a nine point, seems to be the cutoff, but I would say starting with Como, everyone there is implicated in the relegation battle. Venezia, Lecce really looking bad. And also Parma and Caleri not having the best chances. Let's also check out the upcoming fixtures I give you for the entire week. So this is two rounds because we have a midweek round where the standard fixture, of course, is Milan-Napoli, a game that I was hoping that I could be at. But yeah, it didn't really work out this year. Maybe next uh, year. Tuesday evening, that's a really, really big one already. We have also Empoli taking on Inter on Wednesday early on. Empoli have been a really good team. Don't think they will match Inter, but I would say a slight up set potential is there. Genoa, Fiorentina potentially. Also one, you will have to go to Parma and Como, Lazio. Those are the teams that I'm looking at. I don't expect much from Roma, Torino, but maybe that's the crazy match that we will get in the midweek. And then I would argue the outstanding fixture on the weekend is happening actually on Sunday when Napoli is taking on Atalanta at 12.30. This is a big matchup, I would say. All the other ones, I mean, Milan have to go to Monza where they had so-and-so experiences, Udine, Juve, maybe. We have Inter hosting Venezia, should be an easy win, honestly. So I don't see any other really huge fixtures there for now, but you know. Napoli, Atalanta, that's a big one for sure and will tell us a whole lot about Napoli.
Well, these were my thoughts on the Serie A round, this time without Milan. I actually didn't mind because it's my birthday weekend and, you know, already Lusk kind of spoiled that one. So I didn't want Milan spoiling that as well, although I think they would have gotten a draw out of Bologna. Not more because Bologna don't win many matches in any case. Let me know your thoughts, especially on this mad 4-4 draw, but everything else that is going on in Serie A as well. Thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Talk to you soon about more things in my Serie A universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.